Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture nonsense. I'm Aaron. I'm Phil. And I'm Cole. We slum it hard so you don't have to. Okay, do you guys, let me ask, do you guys want the secret topic now or do you want it later? Later. Oh, now. Oh. I have something I want to talk about. Okay, let's talk about your thing and then I'll tell you the secret topic. I'm it's hoping little, none, neither of you are familiar with this topic, but go ahead. It's a little bit of a game. Okay, I'm into it. You have to guess what this pedal is. It's my same game as before, but it might be obvious. It's my same game. A same game. Same game. Um, same game. You're dead, man. <laughs> You're dead, man. Um, okay, it's got three foot switches. Okay, it's pedal. All right, it's got nine knobs. Striving timeline. No. <laughs> okay. Morpheus. <laughs> Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's that. Uh, it's that music downloading. You know, peer to peer client. Isn't that what one uh, of them was, was called? Of, I was thinking of Laura, Larry Fishburne from... Yeah. <laughs> what's that movie, Larry Titanic? Yeah. The Matrix. The Matrix. Dot Matrix. How much so, better would The Matrix have been if it was called The Dot Matrix? <laughs> that would have been pretty rad. And it was like a Tron. It's like a take on Tron, but instead of vector yeah. graphics, it was pixelated <laughs> graphics. It was stuck in a Dot Matrix printer. <laughs> and it's dude, specifically or, the dude, Game Boy if printer. it was just like... It's like stop action, but all in like dot matrix. That would be pretty freaking cool. That would be pretty cool. All right. Anyway, don't steal that idea unless you want to give me credit for it. Okay. It has viewers. It has eight buttons on it that are like little push buttons that light up. I know what it is. It's a Strymon Volante. Yes. So <laughs> congratulations, Aaron. <laughs> I was going to say that before timeline, but I should have because that would have been better that would have been really really funny if you yeah, just I guessed been. it the first time <laughs> that's basically buttons, what you did go... last time on phil's game and then he and then he still gave the point to me that's what was so great about it um so that this pedal is like a lot cooler the more i the more i see it and read about it's it it's pretty stuff. cool yeah i'm like pretty into it especially the pause function it has this pause function that basically mimics like uh, slowing the tape down and then speeding uh -huh. it back up like that. Oh, can I tell you something as an aside real quick? My friend has cats and their cats are named like after um, movie directors. So they have one called kitten Tarantino <laughs> and the other one is, is pause Whedon. <laughs> okay. I kind of like Which that I, one. <laughs> kitten Tarantino. I do not like, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the, those names, but I thought of that when you said pause function is it for <laughs> animals. Pause for animals. It's yeah, got a it's pause got a, function so your pets can play with it. Yeah, it's got their barefoot buttons with their pause buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so but you can what choose, does the pause like, function do? You can choose. It slows. I did a perfect impression of it, but you were talking over it. I thought it, it was great. It because because part of it, it's like a looper. Like it lets you, it lets you, you know, replay. I mean, it, it it's sort of like a much better version of like the flashback. Uh huh with the looping function in it, you know, okay. um, I'm not saying the type of delay. I'm just saying the way that it incorporates sure, sure. and just delay as your on your right. live signal. Um, but then you can, you can slow down. There's a knob that ch chooses how, how fast it does this. But if you hold down the middle foot switch, it, it basically ramps the loop down. And so it's like, is that similar to like then, the rubber neck function on and the then rubber speeds neck? it and then speeds it back up? Probably, because it also sounds like I don't know if you ever played with this. It's a more film, recognizable, the... like it does it in a more recognized, like it it physically mm. sounds like you're just slowing the tape down and then running, reeling it oh, back cool. up. Where the rubber neck is kind of a, it's a more effecty effect, you know. Because the know. um the Cusack tab of delay kind of did that too. Okay, it like like warped up like a ramp up and down, but yeah, I don't think it was probably as organic sounding, but. 
But this, we were talking about this last week about, you know, pedals that you listen to a demo and it's uh-huh. like, I wish I could play like that, but it's the same. Like, I know it'd be the same way where I, I watch these Volante demos and it's like, man, that sounds so cool. But if I got it, I probably wouldn't be able to come up with cool enough stuff to you yeah. know, take advantage of it or whatever. But it is a but super you, cool pedal. It's the and kind like, of thing on... that you'd have to like think of it as a new instrument. Like I have to learn this pedal, you know? Yeah, exactly. Instead of yeah, like, I'm going to yes. play this freaking three chord riff and it's going to sound good through this pedal. Yeah. You know? Which I think is cool. I'm into that. It is cool that, like, I don't know, like, everyone assumed Strymon hadn't put out a pedal for a while, right? Uh, Anything major. Uh, Well, they did their drives. Yeah, last year. Okay. But, uh, like... But you're right. Like, no no revolutionary, like... But everyone, once they came out with those drives, they have their three big boxes. It was kind of like, well, what's next? I mean, the obvious answer was they'll put all of them into a multi-effects or something like that. But, but like, this was pretty out of left field that it's basically this, like, kind of analog slash tape delay a little bit. Well, it's a way cooler idea. Because it does tape, but it also does, like, drum... Which they had never done before. Like that's a new sound for them. The that's I mean, part of it is it like in the if you were to say if but... I were to come to you and say, "Hey, Strymon's Strymon's going to come up with something new and inventive that they haven't done before." What do you yeah. think it'll be? Like this wouldn't have been my guess in a million years, right. you know. So it's cool that. But they, I think it's way better. They, they also, have executed very well. Also, I I find it interesting that it's like a new. Cl- enclosure design if they're doing a new enclosure design that means i I think that means they've got more ideas for big boxes probably with this new enclosure design yeah i mean it's very similar to the the single effect ones that they have it's just like double wide but yeah it is they've never done it before I'm just saying the fact that they have a new no, I, like yeah yeah like they have a that, new platform basically yes that, a new platform yeah. they're not going to just do the one they've got like other things right right that's probably true it but is I like true this Aaron. idea of them like <laughs> I mean it's probably true that they will do it it is thing. 100% certain that if they spent the money on a new enclosure they will do more than one it's not 100% certain. Dang, dude. So the the enclosure does look pretty similar to their big box. No, it isn't. It's flat. And it no, doesn't it's, have... No, it's, it's the same as like yeah, the, the same L as cap, their, but as just twice ones. as wide. I, I kind of never noticed that switch. the small ones and the big ones were different. I kinda, In my head, they were always... They're like, straight. That is what the big ones were. Yeah, know? the big ones are angled and the other ones are not. Yeah. Part of what... Part of like the problem that I just had is I was Googling what the Mobius looks like. And apparently they made this limited edition purple Mobius. And now that's all. I oh, want really? In my life. And it, <laughs> Whoa, it's that's driving crazy. me Uh-oh. insane now. <laughs> Cold, and it was, do it was it. apparently some kind of like giveaway. Crap. How many do you think pay, exist? I'm going to have to pay so much money for that. <laughs> How many do you think exist? It was like, a giveaway is it on like July 50? 24th, 2015. How purple is it? Oh, it's very purple. It's probably purple like the uh, oh, orbit. Oh, wow. I want it so bad. Like the what, Phil? Like the orbit? Isn't that their purple one? Dirty Is it mouth. The same purple. That orbit. <laughs> Not that one. Clean it up. Yeah, is that their like? Uh, oh, flame, whatever. The flanger. You're Dang, right. It's dude. the same. It's that the same sucks. color as the orbit. Thank you. Um. Yeah, but I think it's like people expected them to do like another multi effect, but I. Th- I would rather see them lean into like super heavily featured individual yeah, effects that totally. were like take it to another level instead of just being like, here's 10 more delay algorithms. That are yeah. Like- Cause like nothing about the three big box pedals is all that inventive. It's very well executed. And I'm sure there's like aspects that are like a take, you know, they are like, aspects right. of, i'm sure the timeline can do stuff that other delay pedals can or whatever yeah, and like the mobius the has the dis- or whatever the mobius has the destroyer which is really cool and everything but it's still just like it's very like it, it like the dl4 existed before the timeline right. like it's it's mm-hmm. like a cooler dl4 you know and yes yeah and and this isn't really like anything else out there and i think you know that's kind of how those copper or the cooper pedals were too it was like they did a very specific thing, but it was so customizable and everything. And maybe that's, 
I, I think there's more of a market for that than like trying to, cause honestly the Mobius, there's like certain, like I, I don't love most of the chorus sounds out of it. Like if you can do something really well, do that really well rather than trying to do everything, you know? So yeah. what's your guess for the next with their new enclosure that is definitely going to be, there's definitely going to be another pedal with the new enclosure. You could, you could be right. That's probably true. What's your guess of what it will be? Like what family? Will it be reverb? Will it be I really modulation? Hope, I really hope it's a destroyer type thing where you can do like bit crush. Because the destroyer is kind of limited. It's not really a bit crusher. It's more, uh, well, it's not a bit crusher in the way that most people think of it. It doesn't, it doesn't make your stuff sound like you know chip tune or anything it just like it's it just sounds lower fidelity and it adds like the vinyl like the popping and cracking and stuff but if they if they really fleshed that out i'd honestly probably sell the mobius and get that but so you're you're saying what you want but i'm wondering what do you think that they'll actually do i can't separate the two phil (laughs) i could see them doing something so everyone wanted them to do like a preamp thing. I could see them doing like a like an amp style drive that just gives you a million options. Like that actually makes a lot of sense. It's still like a single thing, and it still would give you like vintage sounds. But instead of being like you know just an overdrive, it would be like you can do all these different parameters of like pre gain and post and tweaking and where the EQ curve and all that stuff is. I mean, yeah, similar to the con. Is it the Condor? Yeah, is yeah, that maybe. The preamp one? Right. But it Chase would be it would be band. all of their it would be like like maybe compressor they they've got a compressor yeah, too, maybe. right? Yeah, they do. Like, and that and and drive and preamp like if it was all of the things all of those ideas that they have in one big box. I could see that being a pretty big deal. The I mean, about, I wouldn't be into it, but I could see a lot of people Yeah. That's true. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't either. But the thing about them is that all of their digital stuff, I mean, all their single stuff, aside from like the big sky and so not the big box ones, but all their single effects are essentially like digital recreations of vintage effects, right? Yeah. So even though, even the, even the Volante, even though it's doing like a lot of new stuff that pedals haven't done before, it's still trying to emulate something that, that exists already. Yeah. So Some I don't know what what would be out there that people would want that they could take and make an, a new digital accessible version of it. Well, like the the deco is, I mean, what what if it was like the deco plus those drives, like with like way way more customizable stuff. Dude, that would be cool if, if it was like their version, almost like the the color box, the JHS color box, yeah. but with like the ability to manipulate the tape at the same time. Yeah, because so like you said, like the console part of it and the recording part of it together. Right, because like you said, you're, that's a, it's a really good point that it's like they're going after vintage things that are really difficult to create live because mm-hmm. the those vintage effects are so like finicky yeah. and tricky, and so they're things that usually people, if they do, they do in the studio, yeah. and so they're trying to take it and make it like because it's digital, it's like it's it's a digital recreation of this like very finicky thing. Right. Um, and then you get this cool finicky sound. That's exactly the same every time. So you can use it live, which is why I think the, the El cap is more popular than the, what's the other one? The brigadier. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. though that one may actually sound better for a lot of people, but because you can easily get like another analog delay. Yes. Which you is, can't easily get a tape delay. Right. And that's why I like it. That's why I like it so much is that like when I, when I, and I, I can't think of a time that I've used it live, (laughs) but when I'm sitting in my house, screwing around with it, like you just barely touch a knob and you get this, like, like the, there's a, there's one knob that's just flutter. Right. And so like I can, if I crank that, it gives it this like completely it feels chaotic because of, but it's the control is right there in one knob, you know. Yeah, and I think that's super. That is super, super fun. But it's like the it's like the advanced me- metrics of pedals, where it became <laughs> like winds above replacement. That's what you know. 
<laughs> you, yeah. It's you know, got a you, huge war. You can only, yeah. The L cap has a much higher war than the, than the right. Brigadier does. Yeah, and it's just the Brigadier has way more competition. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting because, well, I don't know. Are, like... Because you can get an actual analog delay with tap tempo. Exactly. And also, Mm -hmm. like, why haven't more companies... Because there are plenty of pedals, like the ARP-87 has a tape delay on it. Mm -hmm. Like, they should just make a tape delay pedal. I don't... I haven't played with that. I actually have one of those still, but... There are some that do that. But, But like, part of it is because they try... Like, I think... I know we were already talking about this. Like before, I think the new, I think there is just value is putting out a new one that's a tape delay, the tape style delay. There is value in having a single effect and having it be very customizable and tweakable, yeah. rather than having a delay box that has analog and digital and tape and you know mm-hmm. whatever else. Reverse. Was or, the um, is that the Wampler one that you had? Was that a tape? Yeah, and I liked like the faux tape. That was, right. I liked that better than any other delay I've had, honestly. Yeah, the faux tape echo. It's crazy. And I that's sent purple, out my... too. I just need to get one of those again. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty cool. You should just get all purple pedals. But Keeley is coming out with a new delay that is like a tape delay that they announced at NAM. Yeah. What was it called? What was that or? weird one, Aaron, that you posted? I had never heard of it, and you're like, I'm really excited about this. And it was like delay and reverb. Delay I'm sorry if I'm totally changing oh, the subject. Oh, yeah, so that was the um, the Specular Tempest from GFI system. Um, so they had – they first came out with uh, – they had the Tempest delay – I can't remember. Anyway, they had no. They had a clockwork delay, and they had the specular reverb, which are in these like, you know how like Zvex does the sideways enclosures. Yes, they were, yes. They were in that sh- like shape. I mean, one was delay and reverb, like the and gigantium. Reverb. But the specular tempest is the it takes the reverb one and it expands on it, and it adds some delay options, and like presets, and. Um, and some of them are like delay and reverb together, and it's basically just like, I don't know, it's just a delay and reverb. But it's really cool, and it's only it's like three fifty, so it's not incredibly expensive for something with like MIDI and presets and all these crazy high DSP stuff. Um, I don't know, but it looks cool. They're the same people that make the the Cab Zeus, so Mark Johnson uses a lot of their stuff. Ah, uh, gotcha. Which okay. is where I first saw that one um i had seen the others but does he have one mark i think he does yeah friend of me yeah enemy of the show friend of phil yeah (laughs) just kidding no that's that's correct friend of the show enemy of the show friend no show of the phil enemy mark i love you i love you mark (laughs) yeah but does it go both ways it does i'm sure so here's what Strymon's actual next pedal is going to be, it's going to be like a amp cab sim that you can load IRs into and stuff like that, and it'll have an XLR out and stuff. You think that's what everyone was saying that this one was going to be too? I thought it was going to be a phaser personally, but <laughs> it is a phaser. <laughs> so I haven't I haven't thought through this fully. Actually, let's let's hit a sponsor first. I'm about to start talking about something else. Unless hey, sponsor. <laughs> No, dude. Aaron, Wait, what? don't, dude. What? That'll be. A... Don't hit the sponsors. The I just you told me to hit a sponsor. Don't hit the sponsors, Aaron. Well, I already did now. Well, Aaron, okay, say you're sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry, Aaron. No, Aaron, tell the sponsor you're <laughs> sorry. You're sorry, sponsor. Andy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sponsor. Okay, dude, you can't hit that sponsor. Say it like you mean now, it. Now he has an employee that could destroy you with his bare hands. That's, we just <laughs> lost a sponsor because I punched him. So I guess we'll go back to our original sponsors. Um, yeah. this Doss Toothbrush is sponsored by... Let's switch it up. This episode is sponsored by Gun Street Wiring Shop. Turn your... <laughs> they'll turn your SG ding, 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 into ding, an ding, OMG. Ding. They'll turn yeah, your dude. POS into a PRS. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> they'll turn your Les Paul <laughs> into way more Paul. <laughs> 
Yes. I want that on a shirt. They'll turn your Stratocaster into a Stratomaster. Mm. Mm. No. I don't like turn that one. Turn your jazz bass into a... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the... So I'm loving the five-way wiring I have. They'll turn your three-way into a five-way. That's actually a pretty good... <laughs> they will do that. They will. They will do that. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyways, it's 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 really good. So that's You know what I, I need? This is a three-way. Man, what I really need is two more. Two more ways. Two more yeah. ways. It's like, first of all, I need a I need a three-way. Like, I don't know how you... Like, yeah, I haven't even crossed that bridge yet, but right, um, exactly. But here I am in the middle of this vintage, three-way because I have a vintage Telly that only has the two positions. Yeah, have Telly have Tellys always had? It wasn't like a Strat where they didn't have the in-between positions, is it? I think it may have been because wasn't that like the whole thing? I think they had three positions, but they did something different. Maybe Some, like, yeah, I don't like think the they had position. a two pickup position. Maybe not. Because it, it does seem weird if, like, that was such a, a revolutionary thing to do on a Strat. It it probably wouldn't have been that way if it was like you already did that on the telly. Like, why didn't you think Right, and the here? telly was older. I want to say it was like one of the, it was like a toad option thing in the original. Maybe so. Oh, yeah, I mean, like the, like the no-caster, I guess. Yeah. So... Sean, the two pickup wiring, the two pickup Esquire. So was it RJ? Was it RJ Smith that has that telly with the back busted out? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen that. It's this orange telly, man. I hope it is. But yeah, I, I I don't remember, but I I know I know I've seen the picture you're referring to. It it basically looks like this, like you put like explosives inside the control cavity, and then it blew out the back of the guitar. Mm. And I didn't know that it was Sean's uh, Sean from Gun Street, Sean Arbo, that it was his before that. And he like it fell off of a wall hanger and oh landed gosh. on the knob, like uh, on and the, the no- face yeah. of it. And the knob so the like pressure. pushed out the back of the guitar. Oh, wow. And so it looks it looks pretty gnarly, but it's a really cool color. And but it made me think of when I had to I I wondered if what happened was they had to because on mine I flipped the control plate around but the mm. the selector switch is deeper than the knobs mm-hmm. and so I had to like shave away some of the bottom oh, of the wow. control cavity so it, it would fit flat. you know yeah. and I wondered if like the previous owner not knowing that it was Sean had like gone overboard and just jacked no, up you know, through much. the back of it or whatever <laughs> but yeah it's it's uh so know that if you want to flip your control plate around, regardless of what, you know, it's not like the Gun Street selector switch is deeper. It's just because a selector switch is deeper than a pot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all. Check them out. Well, sometimes the cavity is uniformly. Yeah, I think on cheaper guitars, deeped. honestly, it probably is like on Squires or something. Um, but on this one, yeah, it's just an American Tele, but the. Hmm the cavity isn't the same depth all the way across. Cause I'm, I've had pretty guitars, sure like I've had tellies before where I flipped the control plate around and I didn't have to modify it at all. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my super, super, super cheap, uh, telly is just has one giant route. I mean, it makes sense. It's easier to route like a uniform depth in the whole cavity. Probably. Can I tell yeah. you guys, uh, a mod that I did to my strat that's related to this conversation. Let me guess. Me guess so. Duct tape on the strap pins. No, I took off <laughs> that's the, super I cool. Took, You're so I punk took, rock. <laughs> I took the little plastic tip off the selector switch and okay. I replaced it with a telly style. Oh yeah. Tip. I noticed that. And it's way better. I love it. Yeah, so it's like a more so knobby, cool. right? Yeah. It's like the little black one, not the top hat old school, like one, but it's, the, the round one. It's more bulbous, yeah? yeah. Yeah, it's like the same shape as like a knob. Yeah, that's I would. I think I would prefer that on every single selector switch. Yeah, I like it a lot. Although I do currently have a Strat style one on my telly, so that's. But you know what would be really cool? <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. What's that? A little like if if you took like a a die, mm-hmm. or a skull, that would be cool. Oh yeah. Or like if all oh, the knobs like, were skulls or dice. Oh, 
dude. Skulls. You know what you could like, even do is like with paint, paint like a sharp flame, teeth, like a flame pattern on the guitar. Dude, that's a great idea. Dude, you're blowing Man. my mind right now. Imagine if if the inlays on the fretboard were like dice too. <laughs> I remember. Oh, but is... imagine if they like emulated like they the pips on the dice like told you what fret it was. Oh yeah, that's good. At a certain okay. point, you'd have to have... I guess you could have two dice on all of them. Slum fashion. I just can't um, go past 12 without adding a third die. So or first, sides. first, though, th- my favorite part about that whole bit was that I was roboting really hard for the first half of it, uh-huh. and so I couldn't tell that you guys were building up to this thing, and then I just oh. came in, and you're like, oh, you know it would be crazy? <laughs> if like the knobs were dice. And I was like, what are they talking about? That's not... It's like the most boring... <laughs> Like everyone's done that. That's yeah. a stupid thing to do. <laughs> it's idiots. Okay, um, sorry. What were you saying, Phil? Okay, Slum Fashion. When uh, Thirty Seconds to Mars came out, and they had their, they had signature guitars oh, or the Mars whatever. Oh, the Mars died, guys. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what? It's and they, last I don't know how were? they had signature. They had custom guitars or uh, something. Not signature guitars. Custom guitars Mars. with. Uh, with crop circle inlays. Oh, that's cool. I remember thinking, and I was too old to think this is cool, but like the the nerdy uh, sci-fi uh, UFO fan of me, mm-hmm. when I saw those guitars, I was like, oh, that is the freaking coolest thing I've ever seen. I mean, that is pretty cool. It's not bad. It's not the lamest, like it's now not I'm gonna the most look cliche it. inlay they could come up with. Like I still like the inlays on those goth. Remember the goth Gibsons? Yeah, where it was yeah. just like the moon at the twelfth fret or something. Yeah, or it was like a skull or something dumb. You should see the inlays on my acoustic. It's like this Western. It's made in Japan, but it's meant to look like an old West style guitar. Uh huh. So it's like turquoise and pearl. It's like the most stereotypical. It's like the opposite <laughs> of what we were talking about with the yeah. <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's guy. I still want that. So, just an, for the record, goth explorer. for to go to thirty seconds to Mars, you'd have to be traveling about six times the speed of light. That's pretty fast. So, well, it know. depends on where you're going from, I guess. From Earth. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe they were talking about like you're in orbit, you're orbiting Mars, and then you want to get there in thirty seconds, like to the planet. Why am I not thinking? Why am I not finding the? Images right away of 30 Seconds to Mars I think with those up. guitars. Did I? Is this one of those things? <coughs> yeah, it's you actually like Berenstain bears. bears. So, guys, Slum Fashion. Is this Berenstain Bears? Sometimes when we're on, when we're recording, I, I look at Facebook, and just now I did that, and I saw this video that a guy posted, and the caption is, trying to teach a liberal to shoot. <laughs> and this dude's crying because... The rifle hurt him, and this is these are the kind of people that I know in real life. <laughs> but real quick, I'm gonna unfollow this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> old story was for that. <laughs> I like it. I I googled crop circle inlays, and I can't see any that are obviously linked to Thirty Seconds to Mars. Was it was it like one crop circle that kind of stretched across the whole fretboard, or was it just inside of a fret? I'm I'm struggling to find it too. I'm I'm seeing the one. You're probably looking at the same one. It's like a sort of like George Jetson looking shape of a guitar. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> That's my George Jetson <laughs> exactly. Impression. Is that like the Doppler? Was it? Was yeah. Was that, Doppler? that was my Chewy. Is that, what it's called? that was my Chewbacca slash slash George Jetson. <laughs> um, maybe Chewbacca. Is that like a Doppler effect on his voice? He's actually moving, and we don't know it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's always moving. Are you guys ready for my secret it's topic? Like a shark? Yes, I think we're right. ready for anything other than just us googling pictures of guitars. <laughs> so this there's is... a Randy Rhodes that has crop circles on it. Maybe he just played one of those. Yeah, maybe this is a Huffington Post article from yesterday, Uh-oh. from February fifteenth, two thousand nineteen, and I'm going to read you the headline. You ready? Yes. Ja Rule says he plans to create a new festival following the fire disaster. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
This is what the world needs. So apparently, apparently Ja Rule is not happy about the documentaries that came out. Um, and he says that, that the Fire Festival was the most iconic festival that never was. And he plans to, to do a new festival. Um, and it's going to be called the Iconic Music Fest with two N's. Iconic. Which is apparently dumb. his oh, that... talent. <laughs> because apparently he has yeah, a new Icon talent the company. Booking. He has well. The original one was Fire, but the new one that he has is called Icon. Yeah. What about Icon Ish Festival? I, I thought Icon was like mentioned in. In the well, maybe they mentioned it like uh, maybe it was, but I thought it was called Fire too. But at any rate, yeah, like that's what it was. But it's it's literally the exact same thing. That's amazing. <laughs> he has another talent booking app, and from that he wants to do another festival. I mean, the <laughs> idea of the talent booking app is not a bad idea. No, it's not. Like I think it exists, doesn't it? Like, well, I mean, Icon does. Okay, where you can like go on there and say, "Hey, I want like, I don't know." Yeah, it basically some, connects you to some, people. So like, if you're willing to pay, you can like get some B list actor to come to my kid's birthday party or whatever. Right. <laughs> Remember so that Jean story Rule about? Says... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Remember that story? Did you guys ever listen to that podcast where the guy from Blues Clues, the original guy, Steve. he would like. Steve, the one who died from drugs. Ooh, I don't know. Did he? It was an interview with him where he was talking about how he would get asked to go to children's birthday parties and stuff. But this one was one that his mom set him up with, uh, and then the lady <laughs> ended up trying to sleep with him. Oh, what? <laughs> this, this is pretty great. You guys, I can't. That's remember. amazing. I'm sure, you can find it if you just. Thanks, Google. mom. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. Yeah, like I'd be like, yeah, hook a brother up, you know. I'm going to read you some some Jaw Rule tweets. Here's one. I had an amazing vision to create a festival like no other, all caps. He wrote another tweet. Did that. I would never scam or fraud anyone. What sense does that make? Question mark, question mark, <laughs> question mark. What sense? Actually, big... fraud makes a lot of sense. It's just this not is, moral. This is my favorite yeah. one. absolute sense. <laughs> this is my favorite one. He says, I too was hustled, scam, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. With three exclamation points. Uh, that's a great tweet. <laughs> Hustled, scammed, bamboozled, like hoodwinked, led astray. This is like if NASA came out like the day after the Challenger explosion and were like, we can't wait to send another spaceship up into space. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. we get like that. It, that might be a possibility, but like, don't like give it some time, you know? The world but, needs time to heal. The best <laughs> thing about it is like, you know, he's trying to piggyback off of the like, exactly. It's he's like he's just doing it the opposite off way. of the expose from the previous one. Yeah, like Ja Rule has not been more relevant in the past ten years than he is right now. It's so stupid. I love but it. But he's relevant for being terrible at doing one thing and now he's saying, I'm gonna do that same thing again. I mean he was pretty loosely connected to it, to be fair. But yeah, yeah like it wasn't his fault that it failed, but also like it did fail yeah. and he was yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's 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 an interesting level of like tone deafness and also just hubris, you know. Yeah, I love it. It is <laughs> pretty great. And you. honestly, like if you were rooting for somebody like I'd rather see like I just as soon see Ja Rule succeed as anyone else, you know, like yeah, he's I part no of my favorite movie franchise. Him. He had an iconic get it iconic role in. Um, fast and the Furious, the Fast <laughs> and the Furious, the Fast mm. exactly. He yeah. screamed, "Monica!" Tfatf. So the goal was, if he won the race, he would get to have a threesome with Monica and the other girl. Two and girls. Lost. Well, that's Monica and the other girl. No, but that's two girls, Aaron. I know. <laughs> yes, correct. That's hence. Three some, there's three people. Is that why it's called that? Yeah, it's a three way, not a five way. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. So, we we kind of got off this topic a little bit, but and I haven't thought this through all the way, but to preamp, like preamp pedals, it they remind me a lot of all these people selling boutique buffers. Uh -huh. It's like we're trying to fix a problem that shouldn't have existed to begin with, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, 
pedals were mm. fine before you tried to make them better. Just like, like this is ba- like basically preamp pedals are just EQ. For yeah, the so the part. preamp is like the anti-transparent overdrive. Exactly. It's like we want it to yeah. not be trans. We want it to actually shape your sound, which is just what an EQ like. Right. There should be a GE eight or G seven or whatever the Boss graphic equalizer on everyone's pedal board, but there yeah. isn't, and so somebody's able to come out and say, "Oh, here's a f- fancy version of it." And yeah, so but like I mean, they also do like, like try to emulate different types of clipping and stuff too. Like, oh yeah, like I'm over. I I fully admit that I'm oversimplifying it, but in but yeah. in a lot of ways, it it's reminiscent of when yeah, people started right. putting out boutique buffers, and it was like you already had like just get a TU three, <laughs> just like there's yeah, just your stop boutique making buffer. Everything, yeah, stop pretending that true bypass is an amazing revolution yeah exactly so that's all i wanted to say <laughs> but I if agree. it's done well like the condor is a really cool pedal it does more than just a that's not really a preamp i guess but like i mean that is like basically like what you're saying it's the g7 it is like the eq thing yeah and compressor but like on steroids to use a cliche yeah yeah anyways Anyways, this episode is also sponsored. Wait, did we do an ad? Did we ever do any? Oh, yeah, we did a yeah. This episode is also sponsored by the Gabriel Tenorio String Company. Um, buy some strings from Gabriel. He makes the best strings for any of your string instruments, excluding piano. And dulcimer. I don't think he does dulcimer. False. He would. He doesn't do glockenspiel. Auto harp. He does not do mouth harp. Which doesn't well, have strings. That doesn't have strings, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't. Dude, I found the other day. Does he put strings on your harmonica? Does he do harp I saw strings? the tiniest the tiniest harmonica. Because sometimes he tears at my harp strings. Yeah. <laughs> he makes my harp beat faster. <laughs> that was my nice five year old my five year old says my heart was beeping so fast. Beeping. What an idiot. <laughs> He's so dumb. Your kid's an idiot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he probably says drowned, too. Like drowned. <laughs> but like in the wrong context, because drowned is a word. But It is a word. You know Arid. I said instead of drown. Oh, okay. He says drowned. Drowned. Yeah. Like all these idiots on Amazon. Morons. <laughs> That's what they do. These fools. Exactly. Those guys They're the cool. ones. They're the problem. So, guys, I, I have a topic for you here. Um, so, you know how the the clone has become, like, this iconic thing that people have cloned. and we, we Like the iconic own. festival? We clonked alone. We clonk alone about it. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, clon, clone. Which we I don't clonk know alone together. That, but originally we said clon, clone. And then I said it sounds like clon, cologne. And then, we, and then someone else, one of you guys said it sounds like clonk, alone. And then that became a joke that we would make occasionally. So were you mad that that Clon Cologne isn't what came isn't what caught on? No, I was just making fun of the sounds, Clon Cologne. But are you trying to bring that back right now? But Clon Cologne, Clon Cologne alone is way better. You I do like it, it when people misspell col- Cologne and just spell it colon. Yeah, and then they like post <laughs> oh, like whole, I love the smell of my whole, boyfriend's like, yeah. colon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's simple pleasure in col- my colon. life, you know. Yeah, colon cologne. Um, but anyway, that pedal has become iconic. It's been cloned a million times. I mean, not a million, but several hundred thousand times. Uh, <laughs> lots of times. But anyway, I recently read an article that Bill Finnegan, and I think other people have talked about this before, but we don't care. We're going to talk about it now. Bill Finnegan has decided to start making the original clone again. The clone Centaur, that is. Not the KTR, but the original clone Centaur. Um, which is totally different. Which is apparently is he's different. been he's been doing this though. Yeah, has he? Like he's made a few over the years and just auctioned them off, and and maybe he's going to be doing it more now. Maybe yeah, I think that's the thing. So anyway, did it not yeah. get did it not get picked up immediately because it was like, oh, there's one getting sold on for rever- on reverb for or eBay maybe, for like a whole it, bunch of money. Listed under like, and it was just like, well, that's what happens all the time. But it's listed under Clon LLC, so it's not like yeah, it's him selling it. Like he made it, right? I know, but like, why did it? Why did it go under the radar for? I think someone just like talked to him about it recently or something. 
I think he might have posted saying he's going to start doing it more now or something. Because in the past, yeah, it was always like he he was doing it for a specific charity or something like that. But the funny thing about yeah. it is... We like, clearly no, that was the facts. KTR. So here's what happened. No, it wasn't, Phil. <laughs> I want to talk about this without you being amazing like you are at the moment. Just be slightly less amazing. I'm just kidding. So... Here's the funny thing about it is that he made this pedal, right? And it got super hyped and it started selling on the used market for thousands of dollars. Then he makes the KTR and on the KTR it says, kindly remember, um, the ridiculous hype is not of our making or something. Like the ridiculous hype that offends so many is not of our making. But now <laughs> he's making individual clans and selling them on eBay, intentionally <laughs> creating more hype. So He's not though. Like He's a dirty he liar. He isn't the one creating the hype. He's he sold it. But on I'm not eBay. playing. He's not creating the hype. He's but he's like he's now profiting intentionally reaping the results of the hype. No, but yeah. he's still which he's, I think is great. He still sells the KTR and the KTR is a direct response. And it's it's his way of saying, like, this yeah, is basically the true. same pedal. So just buy yeah. it here for two hundred and fifty bucks, which in the article it points out, it's still like almost three hundred dollars. It's like big deal. The so is everything Strymon, else. Yeah. The Strymon drives are more than that, you know. <laughs> Um, and so, but also, yeah, like he, he started the auction at a hundred dollars and right. he didn't like uh, advertise it. Somebody else, it was right. like a music radar article. Like, oh, yeah, he, it's yeah. not like he reached out to music radar and said, That's Hey, true. can you write an article about this? You're right. I apologize. Yeah, Aaron. I apologize. <laughs> but it is like, it, it is a little bit, I mean, on the surface, it seems very disingenuous because he's, he's in a way he's poking fun. Like you can't like he's having his cake and eating it too. He's making fun of the fact that right. all these idiots pay so much money for it, and then he's also taking those idiots' money. You know. But I guess like the was his analog mic does the kind of the same thing, right? Analog man, because he does. He'll really he'll, like every time he makes a batch, he'll sell the King of Tone, put him one on eBay too, and you know that one goes for like more than the ones that he's no. selling direct. No, he he intentionally sells them on eBay at a lower price to try and control the, but are they not? Like, it's actually then? kind of crazy. He's like actively trying to make less money. Like he sells them online at a, at a buy it now price. That's oh, low. Okay. So, he so does then it, it now. so then it yeah. reduces the average sell price or whatever. Right. Which is funny, which is, it. it's a weird, like his, his makes even less sense. Like the, the what, what the clown guy is doing. Is it fin Bill Finnegan? Yeah. Like his makes sense what he's doing, but the the king of tone makes absolutely no sense. And and also he makes the prince of tone, right. which he says like don't listen to everyone else who tells you it's not the same. Like it's the exact same. You can well, get the all difference the same is sounds. that it's like I think it's like made overseas, so they're not exactly like hand wired. But yeah, other than that, they're the same. But even he's same he's like trying to downsell you and say like don't wait for this ridiculous waiting list. Go buy a prince of tone for one hundred and thirty dollars. And yeah. it'll and get two of them if you want, and then you're still <laughs> better off. And like, so it's it's pretty hilarious. How much does the Prince of Tone go for? Like used? It, not much more because you can just buy them new. Like they're in stock. 185 bucks, but they're not always in stock. I don't think. But they're in stock enough that they haven't like overly yeah. inflated. It's crazy that they're like because I think bucks you can. Reverb. But you can get them for under 150. I think. Yeah, I think they're like one thirty five new. It's like the Timmy, like they it, it's it's very similar to the Timmy in that they come up mm. enough. Yeah, like yeah. You, if you just wait around for a matter of weeks, you can you can yeah. find one new and just buy it. You know, that's pretty cool. Okay, I found it. One hundred thirty eight dollars, which is a weird price. But you found what? The thirty seconds to Mars guitar. Oh, nice. <laughs> Send it to me um, a picture. I wonder how, okay. why you haven't been talking for the last twenty minutes. It's so it's it's called an Artemis. I don't know who makes it, and maybe that's who makes Artemis. it. But I don't. I mean, it's a very specific from, looking. From Always Sunny. What's it called? I love A R T E M I S. Oh, that's it. Just Artemis. Um, not Artemis something. But it's weird. It's like the the body has that. I forget the name. That Gibson, uh, yeah, the Explorer. Except there's a weird relief of a like a like a bird, like an owl. 
No, it's like not a Pegasus. It's a oh, like an owl Griffin. A griffin. Uh, and then there are like crop circles on the oh, yeah. inlays. I hate so now I need to know more about this more guitar. Than I thought I would like it. Me too. I now I'm looking at. It, I'm like, ew, gross. But like, I'm really. <laughs> did he have this custom made or? I think he did because when I looked or did, clicked on that picture, did, it says, "Here's a picture of Jared's guitar." Right. Yes. Artemis. Oh but, my gosh. So at, does that mean their website? It's insane. They have like BC Rich style guitars and Explorer style guitars. <coughs> I think they just. But I'm wondering. Did he that they do. did he buy a custom guitar, That's or did I'm, he say I'm I want you, this? He bought a custom guitar. Are you saying like was it made and then he picked and then he bought it, or did they make it? Yes, Aaron. It? That's what I've been trying to ask, and you keep interrupting me. <laughs> no, because you say did he buy a custom guitar? That's what a custom guitar is—one that you customize. Ugh, Aaron. If you don't tell them what you want, it's not custom; it's just a one-off. Wait. What? If I make a guitar to my specs and then you buy it, that's not a custom guitar for you. That's just a guitar that I made. You just added for you. It's a one-off guitar. It's okay, not a custom okay. guitar unless you like say, this is what I want, and then I make it custom for you. That's what customize means. Am I, ro- am no, I overthinking Aaron. it? No, Aaron, you are correct. No, I'm not trying to be correct. I'm just saying like, that's why you were saying, did he buy a custom guitar? And I was saying, yes, but now I realize you meant something else. And I apologize. My bad. <laughs> Phil? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shut up. Don't be sad. <laughs> I'm not sad. Don't be mad. But have you looked oh, at this look. website of Artemis Custom Guitar? Because they are hideous. <laughs> yeah, they really are. <laughs> I'm looking at and it's like everything is like gaudy and it yeah. looks like uh like if affliction or afflicted what is that t shirt brand? Affliction Affliction. Yeah. It, affliction. It's like if somebody made if they started making guitars. Yeah. <laughs> that's what this looks like. But it also the, then it's like I'm some sold. of them are like that and then some of them are just like like there's one that's just like a Steve Vai Ibanez that someone like that they like remade in their own like it's yeah then they have just normal looking strats like yeah it's really weird <laughs> this is dumb <laughs> it's really weird i love how outraged you are that there's something dumb on the internet <laughs> this is dumb <laughs> no it's it's that how are they getting away with I had, this no this is the problem this is the problem is when i saw the picture of the guitar you're mad at yourself a long time ago cool yeah, in my mind, I was like, it is very cool. Yeah. And now the adult me, I shouldn't say the adult me because I, I was definitely a, a legal adult when it first came out, <laughs> which I know makes this worse. Yeah. But in my mind, I was like, it is a very cool guitar. And now I'm, you know. It's like if you yeah. thought Annie was super cool because you watched it as a kid and then you go back and watch it now and you're like, you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is like that. Not to. But. Go ahead. But I, I, the fact that I, when I first Googled 30 Seconds to Mars guitar inlays, the fact that it didn't come up right away uh, should have been a sign that Jared Leto, in his growing success, like probably stopped using a guitar that he now thinks is dumb. But yeah, when he just, in like, 2002, happened. he thought, this is freaking awesome. What does he, he just, play now? Like a... A white, like a Les Paul custom or something. He should if he. Doesn't. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm curious. I'm. I know that they get a lot of. For some reason, they get a lot of hate. I'm. I'm sure that they're like one step away from being. I think the it's because they're terrible. No, I think that's the reason why. No. Are they good? What's wrong. Jared Leto is awesome. You're just saying that because you're like the same age. I'm saying it because. No, he's the same age I, as Jay Leno, not Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually significantly younger than Jared Leto, even. <laughs> right. I'm younger than him? He's 47 no. years old. He's 47? Yeah, he's old, dude. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Sorry, he's Dukes. He's older than Ryan Sorry, Adams. Dukes. And he's way older than Mandy Moore. 
<laughs> okay. Um, shout out to all of our listeners. Who... <laughs> so, shout out to all of our listeners who were who loved my so-called life back in the day. Jared Leto, Jordan Catalano. Ever since I saw you on my so-called life, I've been writing you this letter asking you to be my wife. They asked Jared Leto to be their wife? It's been almost a year and still I've gotten no reply. I'm assuming that you met some other guy. So I sit in my room and watch Romeo and Juliet a thousand times. Jared Leto was not in Romeo and Juliet. I wish I was as cool as Leonardo is, but I'm I'm not. Remember how you felt when Phil was singing Brian Adams songs? <laughs> yeah. So I I hate to I don't hate to do it, otherwise I wouldn't do it. I I went to the Prince of Tone website. Uh-huh. It's the weirdest Prince he's like so actively tone. trying to undermine the supply and demand on his own pedal. He says yeah. on here, they're mostly available Wednesday afternoons and they last at least a few days, if not more. Soon they'll be readily available, so please don't buy one to resell on eBay. Like, it's so funny that he's created this thing that is so in demand, and his uh, response to that is he doesn't want to raise his own prices, which is admirable, I guess, but that's what supply and demand would dictate that you do if you can't right. increase the supply, you know? Yeah. And so he's just, like, doing what he can to... He's trying to he's to, trying to reduce demand <laughs> instead. He's, like, doing negative marketing. He's, he's literally yeah, trying he's to trying, reduce yeah. the hype around his own product. <laughs> he's like, if I can't increase supply, I might as well reduce demand. <laughs> Exactly. But he's he's attempting to re- reduce demand exactly. by like but it doesn't work. by sharing information like uh, he, he thinks that if he can inform everyone enough that that will reduce demand and it right. It just kind of like whips everybody up more. Yes. Maybe. Oh. Like it's it's such a it's so funny though cuz like on one hand it's so I want to say it's admirable but I don't even think it is. It's kind of just like like short-sighted maybe. Uh-huh. I don't know or closed-minded. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Guys, I have to update on our previous topic. Uh-oh. Um the Jared, Jared Leto? Leto guitar is not from Artemis guitars, which are terrible. It's from <laughs> McSwain guitars. And he has two of them. One's called Pythagoras and one's called Artemis. But it's by McSwain oh. guitars. So look up McSwain. Oh, Artemis see Aaron. And Pythagoras. I <laughs> I will He's got two of them. Not, one's white and one's black, but there are other. Ones. I will not concede many things to Aaron, but one thing I will concede is that Aaron is a better Googler than I. Mick Swain? Mick Swain. And the black one actually does look kind of cool, I guess. I mean, like, in context, it looks okay. It's, it's very obviously like a prop piece and not like a guitar that a normal person would buy. <laughs> But it also kind of looks like it's carved out of stone, which is weird. Like, just the shape of it. Weird. Anyway. I'm... So, let the record show that Jared Leto does not play an Artemis custom guitar. Which are dumb. Which are terrible. He plays a McSwain guitar, which are perhaps equally terrible. Yeah, these are not... <laughs> <laughs> these are also kind of dumb. <laughs> Models. <coughs> You just, but they're not doing strat spade. copies. We need to call a spade a spade, even if both things are terrible. They, yeah. they have they have one called red, white, and bullets. Oh, jeez, I see that, dude. I wonder, could you teach a liberal how to play that guitar? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so a quick bad. a quick thing I want to say before Phil's game. It's five thousand dollars. Also, oof. I'm I'm not. This is going to be very disappointing to a lot of our viewers, but there's a small chance that I might not finish my pedal port showdown videos. <laughs> I mean, what? All like waiting with bated breath for the last nine months. Um, Whoa, you can't say that. You can't say bated breath. That's inappropriate for a family show. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. With, I don't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> give me an idea of what I can do with this collection of pedals that I have that is more than I need. That could also um, involve the community and be fun. Like, have ooh, them give them away. Which one I sell or do something dumb with or something like that. Or give maybe them I just away. Do, give maybe them I just all do away live to our viewers. Just give them all Cole, away. Cole, you should, you should oh. use them to take food out of someone's mouth. Give them away, give them away, <laughs> give them away now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, to our viewers. 
Maybe or I'll sell. just live stream videos instead of like trying to make them with production quality. Maybe you should just live stream it and, and then, then put I'm... the live streams on YouTube. Yes, yeah, I like that idea. Because here's the thing: like, at a certain, unless you're going to reach like a sp- a certain level of quality, like anything below that, it kind of doesn't really matter. Yeah, like right now, I'm reaching zero level of quality because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which, right, you're like the students that plagiarize when, and they could just be doing like a little bit yeah, of work like and get if partial they just points. Barely change the wording a little bit, like or not it, even that. Just write like a really terrible essay on your own. And, yeah, and like get, you're like, gonna get 40%. a much better grade. <laughs> You get 40% of the points, which is a terrible grade. It's not like it's math still better where it's than like zero. if I cheat in math to get the right answer, like I get all the points and you can't say I plagiarized. And if I get the wrong right. answer, I get zero. Know? Yeah, that's true. You can get like a terrible answer and still get points. Yeah, exactly. That's why English is so dumb. That's why it's so good. That's why language but legitimately, so McSwain guitars are freaking terrible <laughs> yep they're really bad jordan jordan catalano is still is still first in my heart I but it's pronounced giacomano no jordan catalano oh, okay. don't but do you don't know, try do and you know that song my so-called life explain me what <laughs> do you know that song that i was singing don't guacamole explain me i don't aaron you don't i, I would think I, you would know that what i do it? not it's the ataris oh i mean it but it's clearly about it didn't stick Claire Danes in yeah, my so-called life. It's called or Jordan so-called Carlano. Life. Yeah, it's about Claire Danes. In fact, there's a, a line in it that says something, 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 Miss Claire Danes. So it's very, uh, very clearly about her. Did he ever marry her? Uh, no. You think he got famous and then was like, so what do you say? I'm sure he shot his shot. Yeah, he got to shoot your shot. I would shoot my shot if I was. <laughs> you gotta shoot your shot. If I was in a band and I wrote a song like as as a as a no name band about a famous person, yeah, like about wanting to date a famous person, and then I got famous, right? I'd be like, holy crap, is this gonna happen? Ruin and then it. when it doesn't happen, Ruin like it it's like, oh, about you. <laughs> it's like how in you talking you two to me, how they they would joke about getting to meet the band, and then like. Yeah. They got yeah, to the exactly. point where they're like, wait a second, we're actually going to meet Mono <laughs> and, be- and Thedge, Bonobos? <laughs> here's here's yes. what I like about this song, My So-Called Life, is that the chorus of it is the same melody as the verse, but instead of words, he just says, na 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 na, over and over That again. is pretty good. It is. <laughs> like, I don't want to come with the new melody it. or lyrics, so I'll I, just like, na na I was talking about how I'm not very creative or good at songwriting, but I could do that probably. <laughs> like that's the type of move I would use to just get more bang for my buck out of my creativity. Yeah. <laughs> One of the greatest shows ever made. Jerry Springer. My so-called life. Oh, I've never seen it. Is it available for streaming? Are you talking it, about the sweet life of Zach and Cody? It used to be on Netflix. I don't believe it's on Netflix anymore. Oh. Um, uh, Hmm. Are you Googling it? No. No, we're waiting for you to do your game. Phil. We're listening to you. Are we doing okay. a game? Why would you think we'd be doing anything other than attentively listening to you, Phil? <laughs> Phil, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, do your game. But before that, mm-hmm. let me just say <laughs> sponsors. that I want to thank our final sponsor, Sinusoid. They're very near and dear to our hearts. And in fact, I want to de- um, dedicate this show to our friend John. What's up, John? Hope you're doing all right. Hang in there. Um, What's up, John? But Sinusoid makes great cables. They got good peeps working for them. And I don't know if you follow Squatch, but they Andy just teased some new strap designs that they are about to release. So keep your eyes peeled for Squatch Design Co. And they just released a new batch of boards that are coming out soon, too. So pay attention to that and Sinusoid. They're great. Pro Audio Couture, sinusoid.com. Custom shop, this just in, my so called life is not on Netflix or Prime. Okay, so that sucks. What about Hulu? I don't have Hulu. So what about Vudu? What about Vimeo? Is it on Vimeo? I'm, I don't know. Vim- is it on Kazaa? Vimeo's free? Phil, you know that you could do that all in one place. You don't have to like check each service. What? 
It's on ABC.com. It's on ABC.com. Just Google My So-Called Life, and the very first thing says, it's on Hulu if you have the subscription. It's on Amazon Prime for 99 cents. It's on ABC.com for free. It's on iTunes for 99 cents an episode. Man, you YouTube guys are so good at Googling. $1.99. It's expensive, man. So I want. I think that thing, what Aaron said right before he went into that ad, could be like the tagline for the Gear Slum. He was like, I'm ready whenever you are, but first. <laughs> <laughs> whenever you're ready. That's true. First. Whenever you're ready, but first. <laughs> oh, so called, my so-called life was only like one episode? I mean, one It was season, one season. And it was in 94, 95. Yeah, that's why I didn't see it because I was pretty young. And it's very, very specifically about high school. Like it's not. Like if I would have been four like or five years older, I probably would have watched it. Right. Is yes. It like Freaks and Geeks, as far as like the setting or whatever. But it was like uh, modern. It wasn't like a period. Piece. Oh, so it's like uh, Can't Hardly Wait. Correct. Except it was. No, it's like not. Can't it was. Wait. But it was like a drama, right? It was a drama. Yes, it was not. It it, it definitely had. What like, do you think? Can't Hardly Wait jokes? was. <laughs> it was like um, he just wants the girl. It was like the precursor to like Felicity, I would say. Oh, okay. In a lot yes, of ways, very much so. I mean, there were obviously so like nine hundred two and zero like existed WB before style. then. Yeah, but it was like I, I don't want to start talking about it because I literally am going to sound like an idiot because I'm going to start gushing about Sorry. how great it is. But it is like an a true drama in the sense that it's like. <laughs> It's dramatic. The real life, especially uh, real life issues of of high school sophomores. <laughs> I think they're right like now. at that age. Like, remember when you were younger and you like actively? So I went to my son's school yesterday. Mm-hmm. They do this program where they have a dad come in every day and just like hang out mm-hmm. and kind of like just take pictures yeah. of stuff. What do they call that program? <laughs> it's called Watch Dogs. <laughs> and my as we were walking, <laughs> no, is it really? Yes, and as we were walking to school, my son was Is like, dog spelled D-A-W-G? No, it's D-O-G-S, and it's an acronym. And my son said, do you know what Watch Dogs stands for, what the dog dads stands for? Dads on good standing. No. Oh, dads I got it only... on my first try. Oh, sorry. Dads <laughs> occupy no, I... grade school. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dads of great students. Oh, oh my gosh. And I dumb. and I jokingly guessed that and he was like, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so so they do this French uh they do French immersion, which is kind of fun because I got to go in and speak French to all the kids and whatever. I'm listening. Um and one of their they have an intern. Can I ask you a question about never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. What exactly is being emerged? No, I was gonna ask you a question about the, it's immersion. The playground. It's, that's how you're like, baptized too, Phil. What kind of what Bible. kind of playground do they have? Is there a field involved, etc.? But I won't. It's I won't mostly understand. blacktop. It's mostly asphalt. Oh, very very inclusive. Exactly. So <laughs> they Is it my uh, asphalt. Hey. <laughs> now I'm now the tables have turned on to me all of a sudden. Now I'm the one who's like genuinely like I don't want this to come back to haunt me you know it won't like any, you. anything i say can and will be used against me in court of law All right um and they had an intern who he's from france and and that's what he says when he introduces himself he says i am from france um, he's like a robot <laughs> he's like a conan i it's, am from france oh god and uh yeah, he got a better. job so like there's a lot of immersion schools around here so he was just an intern like they would kind of sub and help out but then he got a job as like a full-time immersion teacher up at at a school up the road you know and so this was his last day and so they were kind of having uh and he happened to intern on the two grades that my sons are in and i happened to be in the class when he sort of said goodbye to both groups so like first it was the second graders and it was really funny because they were like, why, why did you have to get a job? And he was like, well, you know, I have to uh, feed my family. Or uh, He didn't actually say that, but they were like, well, just get a job at this school. Like it's that like, easy. These kids trying to take food out of my children's mouths. Yeah. But they were just like, they were like the most genuine and like ignorant questions of like, well, you can still come back and be a substitute here. It's like, well, that's like a full-time teacher. Isn't going to come be a sub at a different, like it doesn't make sense obviously. But, um, but then when he went to the fifth graders, one kid started crying and then it was like this chain reaction 
of you could tell the kids weren't really that broken up about him leaving, but they really wanted to be like, I'm an, I have adult emotions. I can like, I'm big enough to cry about this. And so, and it was this ice cream party. So it was kind of like a drawn out, you know, it was like a half hour long and, and they're all coked up on and, sugar. And it would sort of like travel from one kid to the next. And like, by the end, there were a couple of kids that were still just like crying and, and, but it wasn't, I don't know. It was just hilarious. And it reminded me of just like with my so-called life, like being at that age where it's like, yeah, I want to, I want to feel like I relate to these emotions. You know, I want to have adult emotions that include sadness and whatever. Anyways, that was all. Did I, did my, did the stream cut out or was that just, was there just nothing to say about that? No, that's good. It's Can just, you guys just not relate to that story. in any way? We we don't we we you, were you guys not that way? <laughs> I <laughs> wait in fifth grade or when I was a sophomore. Well, that's the thing because I think <laughs> I think high school movies are more appealing to younger kids. Like like that was the version of Saved by the Bell wasn't for high school kids. It was for my so called life might be an exception to that, but it was for people younger. You know. My yeah yes. Because that isn't how I, high school actually is. It was like this kid kidified version of it, you know. Yes, exactly. Like all the Disney shows, yeah, that are like, like Zach and Cody, right? Yeah, I'm glad that you know all of their names. Sweet They're... life, <laughs> sweet life of Zach and Cody. And <laughs> like, I guess Boy Meets World was kind of the same way, but that but that actually was set in. I guess it was junior high, probably at that point. Okay, Boy Meets World yeah. started in junior high, but then. Yeah, then it, it went to high went. school, and it was like, oh, weird. This principal just happened to get a job at the high school at the same year that this kid went to high school. Um, and too. then it went to college, and he got a job at that college, too. No, he did not. <laughs> he didn't? Did it really? Did uh, that really I, happen? I thought he was like because, the guidance counselor or something. Somehow because if that's the situation, that body, but. it's like, okay, now I think I have I have to suspect that my – Junior yeah, high principal is obsessed with me. <laughs> there's something nefarious going on there. Not <laughs> he's following me from school to school. Yeah. He's like, I grew up in California and I went to Indiana for college. And like, he happened to go there. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, all the characters went to the same school at the same time too. Like they all went to college together, including like the brothers and stuff. So it's not exactly realistic, but Yeah. Just happened to move at the same year that he did. I don't know. Most of Cole's friends all went to the same college. It's not true. They all applied, but most of them didn't get in. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Suck it, haters. BYU haters. Maybe uh, Boy Meets World. Maybe they're all Mormon. They're all more men than you. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. We're freaking JC... dropping dimes right now. Wait, are you gonna do a game or no? yeah, JC game, LDSers? Bro. Okay, sorry. We're waiting on JC LDSers, bro. Phil, it's we're not ready called when you JC are. LDS. Let me... It's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So you got to put a C in the beginning. C J C. I said JC. Oh, Church of? No, yes. you don't. Yes, you do. The the source of contention about the... otherwise they're just LDS. There's no contention. Not... They're not JC. Not from Cole, but from from others. From others, is that there's no Jesus Christ when you call somebody a Mormon? That there's no Jesus Christ. That's that's the source of the contention. So the JC LDS <laughs> is the thing. I'd probably yeah, but it also kind of is like you know. But they're not it's like JC. It's they're like calling Christmas C. Xmas or something. They're part of the well. C I've been JC. <laughs> I, I've been I've been trying to I've been saying this to all of the all the Mormon kids I work with and some of them like like Cole like literally don't care they're like no it's fine I it doesn't matter but some of them are very persnickety about about the 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 only thing I support is if you like if if that's your stance like if I introduce myself and say what member what church I'm a member of mm. then yeah that's fine but if somebody else says it differently I'm not going to correct them. Phil, like that's ridiculous. also let me let me let me tell but you that what is a very that is kind of a hot button. Topic let me finish right my now. thought. It's something. Let me finish my thought. Okay, and then I'll tell you. So my thought. my thought is, 
all all I want is a a quick way to reference the thing and when I have asked kids, well what what do you prefer what do you prefer to be called then? They say a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. And I'm like, okay, but I'm not gonna say that every F time. That noise. So you have to tell me what is the abbreviation for it. And I say, and it's can, I call you That's an, the thing. can I call you LDS -er? And they go, no, because you're leaving off Jesus Christ. And I go, okay, how about JC LDS -er? And then they roll their eyes at me. Why don't you just, why do you have to that is call a, them by their religion anyway? Why don't you just like call them kids? It comes up in conversation. We talk about, we talk about it a lot. I know, but I'm saying yeah, you like, don't have to like. It's like, do you want them. me to call you my black friend or my African American friend? It's like, just call me your friend, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's my stance. Well, and oh, that and Cole, you stance. you have mentioned this before. Is is uh, th there's a few of them that have said, "We'll just say the church." And that's and, like, and if I it's, get if it's already come up in context, like, but the, see like that the article, problem. Right. That's what that's what what you guys say to each other. That's your word for each other. <laughs> exactly. And that's how right? you would say like to your wife, "Let's go to church." To or church. If you were yeah. talking about the church, you would know that it's the church that you both belong to. But if we're so, talking yeah, about multiple religions in in conversation with each other, then you can't say the church because then that's Exactly. Uh, so uh, yeah. It's it's like this weird it's like this arrogance. It implies this crazy level of arrogance. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah. ours is Which, the church. The Catholic church, right. you have to say that, but ours can just be the church. Yeah. I know, but that's any 15-year-old that believes anything. That's oh, what exactly. I was going to say. say. It's like what you're doing, like imagine if someone like came to like <laughs> your youth group when you were like a kid and like that's <laughs> their, if your only interaction with evangelicalism was with like youth group kids, <laughs> how scary it would be. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's it's horrible. Like, I was I was having this conversation with my dad and because – they were talking about it. I can't remember what podcast it was. Maybe the, I can't remember, but they were talking about like, L, like the LGBT, you know, it started out there and then it mm -hmm. became LGBTQ plus and mm -hmm. now it's LGBTQIA. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that's, that's great. Like you, if, if that's how you want to identify yourself and that's the terminology you want to use, that's great. But if somebody else who's like genuinely trying to be inclusive and, and just doesn't know like what the latest right. thing is says LGBT or something. And then you're like, Oh, actually it's uh, has all these other things. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. Like that's <laughs> lame. Cause it's like, and to imply and to think that there's like this implied bigotry there, just like if someone were to say, well, actually Mormon was a prophet who, you know, transcribed the book of Mormon. He wasn't, you know, we don't worship him. And it's like, well, that isn't what I was saying. I was just, yeah, you know, right. Like I wasn't, like you are, you are inferring bigotry that isn't actually there. You know, right? I'm not negating you, but the the and it's it's interesting that you bring the, those two examples up together because that's that's kind of my point in saying in like actively saying to them, you tell me what you would prefer to be called, and I want to call you what you would prefer to be called. Because yeah, a exactly. Lot of, You're going the extra mile, realistically. Yes, like, exactly. It's not and, your and job it, to know what they want to be called, but the fact that you're actually reaching out is, is like showing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm doing it as a practice to show them right, like, listen, it's not that hard. Time. Yes. It's not that hard to like show grace to somebody when you are on the outside to like, just ask them, okay, just, and, and now it's on you. You are the one that needs to now, you know, talk to me in a respectful way of exactly. what you would prefer to be called and that's not hard. It on both both it's like okay, it's it's one extra step and it's not that hard. And then and it's for all me like to just tone. Just yes. like if someone were to say like okay, I'm not trying to be a jerk but actually like we prefer to be uh, you know, I know you're trying to be whatever but we prefer to be called this then you'd be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that from now on or something." Mm -hmm. Rather right. than like, but it is oh, funny you that you don't it... understand Mormons cuz we don't actually you know. But when I when I say is there is there a shorter is there a shorter thing that you'd prefer to be called? And they say, yeah, the church. <laughs> and like you said, yeah, it's like, it's like well, okay, well valid. now hold on. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. is there actually a shorter one that is actually means something? And, and basically the answer is no. Cause like, right. that's why yeah. people already call us Mormons because that's shorter and easier. And it's, there's no right. implied disrespect. Like it, it's if, if our goal is to try and, and emphasize the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ, that's fine for us, but it doesn't mean that you're wrong in saying, 
Mormon, you know. But it is branding. Like I do get the like the argument, and so yeah, it's like totally. okay, so tell me like how. And but then it's also funny because it's like okay now so you need to think about how do you you're saying you want Jesus Christ in the in the name that's fine and valid so tell me what is the what is the easy way to correct your branding that doesn't make me like bird walk all over the place you know yeah that isn't like so that it becomes like comically <laughs> yes exactly or whatever. <laughs> Just right. like because it just like like let's be honest like LGBTQIA it does start to approach this level of like comically okay like are we gonna you know include every letter of the alphabet you know but but here's the difference here's the difference the difference is LGBTQIA is like a giant category it's like throwing all these people into one category of they are the different ones and. Yeah. <laughs> The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is one thing. You are saying you are one thing. So come up with yeah. one. It's like, if like you, give me two or three syllables. It's come like on. Me as a person, like if I would, you know, if you like someone's a lesbian, you don't have to call them LGBTQI. You just exactly. Call them a lesbian, you know. Exactly. Exactly. The, the category, it has a bunch of letters because it's like a huge, like a mishmash of all these different things. Yeah. And, and it's so like, like saying Christianity versus saying yeah. the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Anyways, right. we've beat this into the ground. Let's... I like it. <laughs> Phil, I don't care. I'm ready when you yes. are. But first, let me go back to this thing. <laughs> um, first, let me take a selfie. Mm -hmm. Is it a bell... What was the belfie? What did that mean? That's did you do it? Nothing. You just made that up. Brophy? Brophy. So start... Did you do it, Aaron? I'm sorry, what? You can... He Did you take, take a, a selfie, Aaron? Did I take a selfie? No. Why would I take a selfie? Well, you just announced you were going to. I didn't, actually. That was your other co-host who said he wanted to take a selfie. Or was it me? Did I say that? You said, hold on a sec. I want to take a selfie. I did not say that. You said, but first, let me take I a selfie. I did not say that. Yep, you were talking about I your butt. I feel like we're losing... <laughs> Why don't you our cold? minds? I was ready for the game. I've been ready for the game for a long time, and you guys got into this weird. Did someone hack our stream and say conversation that conversation about gay Mormons or something? <laughs> Did you say game Mormons? Who is more gay? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just do What's the, the game, Phil? Do Fine. Game. <laughs> Fine. Now okay. that we've been. Now that we're an hour and twenty minutes into this episode, I know. Okay, this our, this review, this is a two star review by JC Photo. Oh, hey, is he JC guy. LDS? <laughs> I was really hoping. I know. Um, <laughs> JC Photo. I know that. And the. <laughs> or is this a guy from NSYNC? And <laughs> that's Chazé. Oh, yeah. JC Chazé. It's like it's just pronounced uh, Chase, dude. Come on. That's Chazé Photo. Two two stars, and it's called "This is a shame." As I've had good experience with brand name, mm, that is a shame. It's a shame. Oh, and he cut that out from his uh, uh, posting here. Okay, March seventeenth, two thousand sixteen. The left or blank oh, it's, side it's of the pedal the left. had a loud buzz to it, rendering it to me anyway unusable. This is a shame as I've had good experiences with brand name pedals in the past. And now I'm going to read a comment on that. Oh, JHS Kilt? By Mike Sell. And uh, his comment is, did you contact brand name at their website? Best customers more out there, man. They will take care of you, dot, dot, dot. And hopefully... Earn back your loyalty, dot, 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 exclamation point. Okay. Oh, it's full tone. How did you know that? <laughs> Wait, is Just it kidding, actually it's full not. tone? Uh, no, it's not. That would be great because it's like, yeah, full tone has have... the best customer service. Yeah, right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they have notoriously bad customer service. It's like a joke that I made based on that. Is it the Jekyll and Hyde from True Tone? <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're Googling now. You're cheating. What did I Google? Left side? Left side pedal. <laughs> no, I just guessed it. 
Uh, as soon as you said the left side was noisy, I knew that's what it was. I don't know why. Okay. So we're one in. <laughs> Cole has one point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. This is the game where everything's made up and the points don't matter. False. Everything matter. The stakes are high. Yeah, everything matter. <laughs> Every, all of the matter. All of the thing matter. Yes, all, all of the thing, thing matter. All thing matter. Okay. Here. Next. Go. All right. This is a three-star review uh, by Darren on. Halm. And uh, the title of the review Tell is me how I'm Meh. To live <laughs> June 2nd, 2016. I know this pedal gets a lot of props as a cool, weird pedal from the 90s, but compared to some of the amazing boutique pedal available today, it's nothing special. A blank circuit sits parallel to another circuit. This is nice because. You can dial in the second circuit mix for some more musical effects. I guess my real problem with the pedal is that I don't like the first circuit. Just... I wish it was more trebly or fuzz-like. It's definitely capable of some unique tones, but there are better weird pedals out there for the same price point. A whammy? Some kind? Pitch shifter of some kind? Is it a sparkle drive? No. Is it like a is it a mix of is it like a mix of two effects that are recognizable types of effects? Yes. Hmm. Is it like along the lines of a like a fuzz and a whatever else Hendrix used? Like that one pedal you had? I would not say it's a Hendrix inspired <laughs> daily. Is it a uh, effect? Clon Centaur? No. <laughs> Dude, I hate the right side of the Clon Centaur. <laughs> is it is one of the is one of the effects fuzz sometimes? Did Aaron say something and I and I no, didn't I hear him? Said, is it Did he I make a guess talking. just now? No. Okay. Is one of the effects like a fuzzy <clears throat> type thing? Distortion Dude, is this a cool idea? Yes. The bipartisan drive and like you have the right <laughs> side and the left side. <laughs> yes. And the left side like looks good on paper, but it doesn't actually work in the real world. But then the right side is just like the right side just like screams the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And when you turn on the right side, all the poor people like get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but the left side distributes all the power the, oh the left side is like the ideal exactly guy. but then it's like but then there's not enough so it like yes. has it has like eight outputs on it but none of them get enough <laughs> level to where you can't even hear it you know i like and the right the right side <laughs> has the right side has like four signals but they just compete until only the worst one comes out and rises to the top <laughs> exactly that's they what they should have called the 50 They all defeat each other, and then it's got this weird, like, Korg Miku thing that didn't even, this isn't even related to your original signal. It somehow succeeds. <clears throat> they should have called the 50 50 the bipartisan. But still kept the same artwork. Dude, no. the bi party son, like either S O N or S U N. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm. Um, so it is a fuzz? It is not. A fuzz. But it has I feel fuzz. Like, like one of the I feel like you were fuzz. kind of dismissive of my pun that I made, Aaron. The, kind of wanted. I, I was very dismissive of that. Okay. <laughs> then my feelings. Are, thank you for validating my feelings. Then <laughs> my feelings that you were dismissive. <laughs> it's it's a drive drivey kind of thing. That yes. Oh, you said it's not fuzz, but drive. Is it yes. the? But it's from the nineties, or is it, it? Does it have any kind of treadle? associated with it i don't know what that means is that am i saying the word right or did i remember it wrong i think it's treadle, treadle? are you <laughs> saying the word treble i said treadle <laughs> once and you guys made fun of me no i was the one that was saying it wrong but does it have like I... a, a rocker like a like a wah pedal whammy pedal type thing on it at all no is it a fuzz wah a... oh 
Clear white. There's no, you, you mean like a foot pad that rocks? Yes. No, there's no. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking, that. if it was some kind of fuzzwa or something. Um, it, like, what's the form factor of it? Standard. How many, like, foot switches and knobs and whatnot? Uh, How many knobs we one. Talking? There's one foot switch, and there are oh, five one foot switch. knobs. How big is it? Standard. There's no such thing. <laughs> no such thing as standard size? Like standard size for like a Chinese-made pedal, or like standard size for an American pedal? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> uh, Justin, Jess sent me this comment that he was going to make, but he was like, I don't feel comfortable making this in public. Somebody asked me about that True Tone pedal that I got, what kind of power Ooh. it takes, and I said, Ooh. just normal kind, and he was going to reply, you mean white? <laughs> <laughs> white power. That's good. Yeah, which is like, a, there's like dual layers to the joke. Um, oh, anyways. gross. So is it, like, so is it like, a, a, like a boss size enclosure or a big muff size enclosure? Boss size enclosure. Is, is it, it a boss, boss pedal? pedal? No. Is it an Ibanez pedal? No. Is it, a is it an Ibanez pedal? pedal? Wait, what? Take turns. Line six. What? It is not line six. EHX? It is not EHX. MXR? No. MXPX? No. GTFO? H? No. LMFAO? No. Some 41? <laughs> Some 42? <laughs> uh, quotient 42? Some 41? Don't, Some don't. 30 seconds to Mars. Oh, another... Number and band name. <laughs> okay. Nine, nine Inch Nails, N-I-N. How um, many foot switches does it have? One. How many knobs? Is the it one. Have? So Five. It, so it's like did a drive. It's a, yeah, he did. It's a drive and something else. Yes. Is this something else a modulation effect? Yes. Is it like Is a it ring mod? Oh, sorry. Flanger? What? F- what did you say, Cole? A ring mod. Yes. Is it the gonculator? Yes. Oh gonculator. How did it take Dude, you guys? I so was long? literally gonna. I have no. I was gonna guess that at the very first. But I didn't pedal. know the gonculator had a drive aspect to it. Maybe well, that's how distortion. all mods do. Yeah, like that's funny because actually Adam Rohr, or er, did he post his? Is that who posted it? Maybe it was Paul Pennington that posted it, and it made me want to buy it. So you guys, it's so funny because you you say <laughs> what. You say, why don't you give read reviews that give us any information? I know. And no, I'm always this, thinking that's totally on us. Like, it's, I'm always thinking like, well, if I give you too many too much information, then it like you guess it immediately. And this one, I'm reading it, and as I'm reading it, I'm like, they're gonna guess it right away. And it took you so long to get because there's a lot of information I, in there. I honestly, was gonna say Gonculator, but that's I wish I had. All I all I knew is that it was from the '90s. That's like the only thing I knew because I'm not familiar with that pedal at all. I need to play it. Like when I some, bought when it, you read, I should, like, when I should you finally read start Weird playing effect, it. The first thing I thought was Ring Mod, and then I thought Gonculator, and I'm an mm-hmm. idiot for not saying it. But that's on yeah, me. I got to live with that. Okay, so I'll um, take the credit for that point. one. So it's point. one to one. I don't even. It's one. It's two to zero. So You're we're one. We're tied. Zero. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, this one. Okay, I'm gonna read this guy. Do it then. All right. This is a two star review. Um, and uh, it's a two star re- review by Rich P. July 3rd, 2015. It's like Donald Trump. Sorry. Nothing like the older units from the 80s and early 90s. I have an old beat up one I bought. New back in 88. It's a rat. And it is a smoother and warmer with a natural tube breakup and push. These new ones sound smoother, smothered and artificial. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a second. <laughs> Sorry, but the new one smoother. is back in the box and on a shelf. So it comes in a box. <laughs> so is, is it, it a rat? rat? Two. Proko it is rat not. Two. It is not. Does it have a tube in it? No. I'm going to read another review. Because why is that full? Two star review. A. Carson Gallagher. TS9 is a tube screamer of some kind? TS808. TS808. 
TS90. I found TS90. I never even used this pedal and waiting too long to return it. So it's still in it's still new in the box. <laughs> I found another kind of overdrive that I love. Ooh, it's an overdrive. And this ain't it. So he's reviewing his ability to like stay on top of his purchases. <laughs> Basically. Is it a is it an Ibanez TS eight oh eight? I already it guessed is not it was an a two Ibanez. framer and if Yeah, okay. but he ignores you when he's talking. Is it so. a boss pedal? DS one? It is not is a it boss an pedal. Ibanez pedal. It is not an Ibanez pedal. Is it a Maxon oh. pedal? It is not a Maxon pedal. Digitech DOD? DOD two fifty? No. Is it an electro pedal? Is it Digitech? Pedal? No. This is what? neither Digitech nor Electro Harmonics? Correct. Okay. No. Is it MXR? No. MXPX? Wait, did you did you ask me if it was a boss pedal? Yeah. Yes. It is a boss pedal. Oh my God. That's the first. Is it an SD1? <laughs> Blues driver. SD1, yeah. It is an SD1. Yeah. I get credit for that one, though, because I said boss pedal first. Yeah, but I said Dang, SD1. I can't believe Aaron got all three of those. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> I ruined my whole day. On community day of all days. <laughs> Cole, on that topic, is do you feel that your 83 SD1 is different from like newer ones that you've played? I don't know, because I haven't played SD1s that I remember. Uh, I've I've owned them, but I don't remember. Like, I've sold them. So I, I'll like get them in some bulk trade or whatever yeah, and yeah. sell them really quickly. How do you feel about it, the one that you have? I like it a lot. Um, I need to just plug it into, I need to honestly just get one. Cause I'm sure you can get one for like 30 or 40 bucks. Right. Okay. Probably so check less. this out. Like, I think you should about the same as a DS one. You should. It. And you should do, you should do a shootout of the two. Live but, stream. Then so check this out. Or, or whatever. But don't yes, play it. Just exactly. talk about them. Where they look. <laughs> yeah. This one's a little more beat up than this one. So I guess that's not okay. Unless you're into that kind of thing. Um, okay. This Here's a comment on that 80s, 90s review, and the guy, this is Mitch S., and he says, sorry, but the identical components are identical. Well, doesn't yeah. matter if it's Taiwan or the older MIJ versions. You're hearing subtle differences in the component values that change with age. The SD1 is the pedal that has changed the least out of all the boss pedals. So this guy's claiming that the age of the components does affect the sound hmm. that they age and that that changes the sound. I don't know about that. But that that, that means like that they don't sound the same as when they did in 88. But like they will. Right. No. Yeah. yeah yes. In, but my point yeah, is like no, if you time traveled, right. The new ones sound the same but, as the old ones did when they were new is what he's saying. Yes. But also like the amount that it changes is so minuscule. Like, I bet you could pull all those components out and they would all measure almost exactly what they were before, you know? There's you a, think so? There's a bunch on Reverb for 30 bucks plus shipping. Like, there a lot of them. And know, you could I'm, probably get them down. I'm literally in the yeah. process of buying one of them. Whoa, two other people have this in their carts. Are those you two jerks? No. No, I did not do <laughs> that. That would be But funny. I noticed that, too. I never noticed that. It says two but other dude, people have it in their cart. Did you guys see this Boss Super Overdrive shirt? No. It's no, why? It's pretty sick. Go to Reverb and just search Super Overdrive, Boss Super Overdrive. It's really cool. I think it's really cool. It's kind of goofy, I guess. But. It's pretty cool. I wonder cool. if they have it in a super large size. Oh. A super overweight. <laughs> Get it? Guys, I just feel like I'm super overdrive right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. I feel that way, too. I didn't see it. You must have like you must look at more shirts online, and so it knows I it. no, I went on Reverb and I searched Boss Super Overdrive. And then I know, I so low to high, it. and then that was what was. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <clears throat> that is a pretty cool shirt, and I wonder if Boss makes that because that is weird. Yeah, I don't think it is. <laughs> like, does it... that's like nothing else they make. <laughs> no, it says Boss Authentic Clothing. Yeah, like it's got some freaking skull on it with wings and all this fancy. It's really weird. It's so weird. <laughs> and then you clicked on highest? Low to high. They're twenty four ninety nine. Anyway, guys, if you have a vintage overdrive and a new version of that same overdrive, whether it's a 
SD1 or a RAT, please let us know. What's the difference? Does it sound good? Does it sound different? Is this like friends with benefits? Is it a Here, here's shirt? what I'll say. I bet that the drift of components you would get would be within the range of components you would get brand new. Meaning like, right. you know, you buy a resistor that the, the range there is probably, and it depends because you buy, like you pay more if you want a tighter, you know, tolerance on that or whatever. But I bet it's right. like in the same ballpark. Like you may have an old one that sounds better than a new one, but that doesn't mean that all old yeah. ones sound the same and all new ones sound the same. And then exactly. all old ones like, are better than the new ones. Yeah. Like I bet the newer ones probably are more consistent from pedal to pedal. Yeah, probably. But yeah. And it's possible that that consistency is like makes them quote unquote worse. Yeah. Because like maybe the tolerances that they want is not the what's desirable. Like the desirable sound might be the anomalies. Exactly. Yeah. Needless to say, Needless. Cole, you have to do the Needless shootout. Needless to say. I will. I'm working on it. Guys, I only have one more thing to say about this topic. Do you have another one? Phil? That was three. I know, but you always do three. <laughs> <laughs> so you're he right. He doesn't always do three. <sighs> so you can get the SD1 Waza for hundred bucks. Gross. Or sixty-five new. I mean, here's a sixty-five dollar one. Or you could get a J JHS modded one for hundred and twenty-five. Jizz. <laughs> uh, easy. Here's a 1982 Trans Am mod, huh? Oh, I kind of want that. It's what the mod? Bucks though, that's a lot. I just offered two, so hopefully I'll win both of them. No, I, I kind of want a 1982 one. Wait, what? What did you offer? Twenty dollars on both of them. Twenty dollars plus shipping. Yeah, so thirty total. And they're li they're both listed for thirty plus ten, so it's not like crazy, but I doubt I'll get either of them. At that price. Is it hard to know the exact date on these? Because this one is listed as 1981 to 1988. Wow. Yeah, that seems kind of like a wide... There's like some indications. Uh, like you should be able to... It depends on what piece you're looking at. If they don't have the serial number on them anymore, mm -hmm. there's like ways you can narrow it down because of what kind of knobs and what the label said on it. But if you have the serial number, you can narrow it down pretty tight. Interesting, this because this one's like way cheaper than the ones that have the exact date on them. Yeah, so that it, it could be. Does it show the serial number? Mm -mm. Where's the serial number? It's like inside, right? That's the thing. At, at one point, it was inside, like stamped inside, and then it moved to the back label. But mm. it also had a stamp inside, like by the in the mm. battery compartment. You know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna buy it either way, but. You guys, this episode is really long. It's all right. We're about to go. <laughs> so, folks, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Um, tell us something good. Send us some money. Tell, tell me something, something good. good. <laughs> guys, but seriously, if you like our show and you and you like what we do, please support our sponsors, um, all of them, because they're good folks and they do good work. Mm-hmm. And please support us as well, because we're also good folks and we do work. And honestly, even if you don't like our show, go support them. And honestly, if you don't like us, our show, you can still support us. Like, if you yeah. don't like our show and you're still listening an hour and 40 minutes into an episode, then you got to reevaluate your life. And maybe they just tuned in, like, at the end. And they just caught the <laughs> end. Also, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Gear Slum <laughs> podcast. On 97.9. <laughs> Thanks for friendship. Thanks for friendship. Thanks for friendship. Mm -hmm.